It is done, it is done, it is finally done. This is my third and final video covering my Arduino controlled turntable. And as you can see, it is installed in the turntable and I'm happy to report that it is working. So in this video, I'm going to give you a quick update on the items that I've changed since my last video. Um, I will show you the turntable in action and then I'll also give you some more information about the turntable controller that I made. Without further ado, let's get to it. All right, I've made a lot of improvements to the uh, turntable since the last video, and I think one of the biggest ones is my new electronics enclosure. So this will ultimately be mounted underneath the train layout right next to where the turntable is going to be, and this houses the, uh, the stepper motor controller um, as well as some other odds and ends. So let me show you what it's got in here. So first I should talk about the outside probably. So here I've got 12 volts DC coming in and I've just got a little power supply here. Um, and then I've got two connectors, one male and one female. And I did that so I wouldn't mess up the leads whenever I connect this to the turntable whenever it's finished. And then I've got a Cat5 connection. And this Cat5 connection is then connected to this connector on my control panel. Um, just with a standard Ethernet cable, so that's nothing crazy. Inside of this, we've got um, our stepper driver. Um, I've got, again, the Cat5 connector, and this breaks out all of the connections. So these connections are 5 volts DC, ground, um, stepper motor signals, uh, and the Hall Effect sensor signals. So all of those run through here. So that is the electronics enclosure. So I've done some 3D printing off camera and I came up with this wall structure for the turntable. Um, and this is getting to be such a large project that even on my Ender 5 Plus, I had to break this wall section out into four pieces. Um, so that's what you can see here. Uh, how this works is the turntable itself goes in the middle and obviously spins around. And this wall section is designed to be the right height so that whenever you install it on two inch rigid insulation foam, it butts up right against the corner like that, so it's a nice flush finish. So that's just a quick update. I'm going to go take this and prime it, and uh, then I will show you once I get everything installed. So now that I have shown you all of the updates I've made to the turntable since my last video, let me show you it in action. So first, let's get the locomotive on the mainline track and back it in to stall one of the roundhouse. So. I want the head position to be uh, lined up with the main line, which it kind of looks like it already is. Okay, yep it is. And now I'm going to pull the locomotive forward. And this old DC controller doesn't like to go slow. It likes to make the locomotives either stop or go full speed, but looks like we're getting it pretty good. Okay, so now that we're on the turntable, I want the head position to go to stall one of the roundhouse. So I'm going to keep the selector switch on the head position and stall one of the roundhouse is programmed as position two on the controller. And as it does this, you should hear a click. And what that click is, um, it's the auto reverser I built into the controller, so it should automatically flip, flip the polarity of the tracks. And I heard the click, so I should be able to just back out into the stall and I should be good to go. Perfect. Okay. Now let's take um, the locomotive in stall three and pull it out into the main line. So what I want to do is make the, let's change it up a bit. Let's make the tail position go to stall three. So I flip the selector switch to tail position and stall three of the roundhouse is program position four on the controller. Okay. All right, let's just pull the locomotive. 
locomotive out onto the turntable. And let's put this locomotive onto the main line. So let's say we want the tail position to go onto the main line. So we say tail position, we leave the selector switch on tail position. And uh, the main line is position one on the controller. So we'll hit that. Again, you might have heard the click, that's the auto reverser, so I should just be able to back this directly on to the main line. Perfect. So as you can see, it really works very well. I'm very happy with this design. Now for the finale, let's try something a little bit more difficult. So I'm going to pull the train back onto the turntable. And I'm going to set the controller to manual mode, and I'm just going to have it spin. And then we'll make sure it's saving its step location, um, and then we'll try to see if it can still line up the tracks properly. This is an experiment for you and I. Um, so while this is spinning, I'll kind of give you a, a brief explanation of what's going on if you haven't seen my other videos. So um, how this whole setup works is that there is a stepper motor underneath the table and that's spinning my turntable. Um, and up in the front, you can't see it, but underneath the tracks, there's what they call a Hall effect sensor. And that Hall effect sensor goes past a magnet, which is located right down here. And every time it goes past that magnet, it designates it as the home position. And what this turntable controller allows me to do is program any track position around the turntable based on the number of steps from that home position. Um, and what that allows me to do is have, you can't have an infinite number of possibilities where you can put tracks, but it's pretty close to it. Wherever you can fit a track around this turntable, you can program the turntable to line up with it. So it's not a set spacing for tracks, such as everybody's seen these old, you know, turntables and you can only have tracks in certain locations. Well, with this, you can put your tracks wherever you want. Another great feature about the controller that I developed is that it keeps power to the tracks at all times. So the only time there's ever a blip to the power going to the tracks is when my auto reverser flips polarities. So that's another benefit. So it seems to have been spinning long enough, so let's see if we can get the train to back out onto the main line. So I've stopped it, and I want the tail position to go to the main line. So we're gonna keep the selector switch in the tail position. And the main line is program position one. So let's press that. All right, let's see if it can work. Bingo. Yeah, this whole setup works really well. I'm very happy with it. Now that I've shown you the whole system in action, I'm going to give a brief overview of the controller for people who haven't watched my other videos. So this is my turntable controller, as you saw me flipping switches on and pressing buttons on. And um, just for size reference, here's my cell phone. The controller is really not too terribly big. Um, this is what I would call a working prototype. So it works. The programming's close to where I want it to be. Um, but the final design is going to be a little bit sharper looking um, and maybe a little bit more ergonomic. But I can still explain what's going on. So here is what I call the head or tail selector switch. And what this allows me to do is I have these 10 buttons here. And um, this allows me to program positions to each one of these 10 buttons for the head of the turntable and then I can also flip it to the tail side and program another 10 positions. So in total I can program 20 positions with 10 push buttons and this switch. Up here I have a program button and what this program button does is it allows me to program track positions. So my goal for this design was to have 
a uh, controller that was just as easy or easier to program than your car radio. So how this works is you move the track to whatever position you want it to be in. So this potentiometer turns the turntable into manual mode. So if you turn the potentiometer to the right, it turns the turntable clockwise. To the left, turns the turntable counterclockwise. And this potentiometer here changes the speed at which the turntable moves. So if you want really precise movements, you can turn it to the lowest position, or if you want it to move really fast, you can turn it to the highest position. So once you get the turntable to the position you want it to be at, to program, all you, tip, you do is you hold down this button here and tap whatever button you want to program, and you saw the flashing lights, now that position is saved. And again, you could flip the selector switch to the head position, move the turntable wherever you want it to be, hold the program button, tap the position, and now the head position is saved. So um, that's really nice to use, but another good feature about this is if you hold down the program button, it's going to do a whole bunch of flashing here in a second. There we go. And once that flashing stops, it actually takes all of the saved positions you've programmed into this controller and saved them permanently. So what that means is you can unplug this controller and do whatever you want and then plug it back in and all of those positions are still saved. Another great feature about this controller is, as I discussed before, it's got a built-in auto reverser. So it can determine whenever the turntable is moved more than 180 degrees and automatically flip the polarity to the turntable. So you don't have to do it manually and you don't need a third party device to be configured with this. It's all built in. So the programming of this controller isn't quite 100% complete yet. I am still working on it. Um, but when it's done, it's going to be pretty much a universal controller for any stepper motor and limit switch combination. So what that means is if you build your own turntable and it's controlled by a stepper motor and you use a limit switch or a Hall effect sensor to indicate a home position, um, this controller should be able to automatically detect how many steps it takes to do a full revolution around your turntable and also how many steps it needs to uh, take into account to switch on your auto reverser. So that should be built in to the software whenever I'm done. Whenever this is finished, I was really thinking about starting to sell kits to help the community. I know there's a lot of people out there who are a lot better than I am about the hardware of building model railroads, but um, I do have a little bit of experience with electronics. So maybe this is something they could use to take their turntable design to the next level. So if that's something you'd be interested in, maybe buying a kit with the Arduino board, and uh, maybe the controller shell and some buttons, uh, please let me know in the comments. I'm kind of excited about the possibility of starting to get these out into the community and see uh, how people take it to the next level. So in summary, thank you very much for watching and have a great day.